Greetings YouTubers, welcome along to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing the Aquila GV250 from Hyosung. Um, pretty cool bike, uh, as far as I'm concerned. A little bit of history on this one. Uh, back when I started riding about two and a half years ago, uh, I was looking at motorcycles and this is one of the bikes that I actually looked at. It was the cheapest one that I could find. It was also the most powerful one that I could find. Um, unfortunately, six months after I bought the, might have been eight months after I bought the, the motorcycle, um, I had an accident, uh, bent the front forks up and basically smashed in this whole side of the bike um, and roped the bike off. Uh, almost wrote me off as well. I'm still having surgeries to try and fix the issues that are, uh, I had on, on that motorcycle. Um, so at any rate, we ended up uh, with this uh, beautiful um, opportunity not too long ago to be able to purchase another one. Now this one's in much rougher condition. Normally all of this stuff here would be chrome. All of this stuff here would be chrome. Everything would be chrome on the bike. Uh, unfortunately the chrome was flaking and peeling and not doing very good things because this is an old bike, it's a 2007 and it's obviously been left out in the rain. So I'm slowly, I picked this up for a song, I picked it up for next to nothing, probably around about 1200 US dollars. Uh, and um, I decided because this was my first bike uh, that I was going to restore it back to 100% new and um, and it would just be the little bike that I used to be able to uh, drive around uh, to the shops and and uh, things like that so I put the uh, the saddlebags on there um, which aren't secured properly at the moment but uh, put the saddlebags on there and the only other addition that I've done is uh, this uh, nice little phone holder which also has a three uh, uh, a three amp um, USB charger so I can charge GoPro batteries and everything while I'm out doing my videos. Uh, aside from that, um, she's and the uh, the AliExpress special that I bought as far as windscreens concerned, um, she's pretty much just a standard bike. So what do you get with this bike? Well, you get a, um, a, a front disc brake, um, and uh, it's just a Hyosung uh, front disc brake, and you get a rear drum brake. Um, this was a 2007 so there was no EFI, there was no anything like that at that time um, for, for these bikes, although if you go to the 2010 version of this, same amount of horsepower, uh, which we'll get to in a second, uh, and, you're, and you're looking at um, uh, fuel injection. So as far as I'm aware it's still the only 250cc motorcycle with fuel injection, most of them are carbureted. This one actually has dual McKinney carbs on it. Um, and uh, it's oil air cooled it's not just air cooled so that's a that's a cool little uh, addition to it just helps to keep the uh, the engine a little bit cooler and and uh, working a little bit better um, now the, um, uh, the the there's been so many different uh, comments made on these bikes uh, about fit and finish etc etc and i'll say to you that i don't think the fit and finish is 100% on them. They seem to, to rust out and pit uh, very, very quickly. Um, but they're a cheap bike. Uh, they are uh, just over 28 horsepower for these uh, with 22 newton meters of torque. So if you're looking at a modern bike, if you're looking at, say, uh, a Royal Enfield, uh, or you're looking at uh, any of these um, sort of more modern. Uh, low cc, say 350cc or so, um, you know, 250 to 350cc motorcycles. Uh, most of them are well below 28 horsepower. Uh, so with this one being 28 horsepower, it's 155 kgs dry. It's around about 180 kgs wet uh, with all your oil and fuel in it. So uh, I think that they're a, a very, very good buy very very flickable around town doing u-turns and all that kind of thing <coughs> um, works really really well on this bike um, it has preloaded preload adjustment on your rear uh, on your rear suspension but that's it uh, and uh, so you can take two up um, I wouldn't suggest taking two up on a long trip you probably just want two up around town so if you're going to university or something along those lines and you need to have a uh, uh, a pillion on the back there, uh, 
you know it'll it'll handle a 50 to 60k an hour with a with a pillion on it without too many problems at all it looks much bigger you can see that it has a, a much bigger uh, street presence than uh, most 250ccs uh, partly attributed to the 200 and, uh, sorry to the um, uh, 14 litre fuel tank uh, on it um, the Ugos on it are very very nice uh, the only thing that I have found is because I'm six foot um, my backside ends up very hard up against the back here and um, the uh, uh, the back of the seat tends to rub on my tailbone if I'm on the road for any more than about 30 to 40 minutes at a time uh, it does start to get a little bit painful um, so front guard is fiberglass same with the back guard is fiberglass I thought they were a plastic but they look like they're a fiberglass from some of the uh, paint that's been removed um, and uh, so that's really about it for this bike um, what we're going to do is we're going to take it for a bit of a cruise <clears throat> I'm going to uh, sort of explain a few more things to you as we go along uh, we're going to test this bike out we're going to do the normal route that I do if you don't follow my channel um, uh, I normally have an off-road section because I do a lot of ADV bikes uh, so I normally have an off-road section we're not going to take this down the off-road section although I have taken this on dirt roads and it does actually uh, go quite well um, but uh, we're going to head out to a place called Raglan in New Zealand. It's one of the top surf beaches in, in the country. As you can see around us, or you can't see around us, it's a very foggy day. So just bear with me as we, uh, as we move through the, uh, uh, the review. Uh, and I'll explain to you why I bought this over other bikes that happen to be out there. All right. Okay, so we're off. Um, so a couple of things that uh, I noticed when I first got the bike that can be really uncomfortable unless you've got the right setup going on uh, is oops, drag my head. Um, so uh, one of the uh, things that I do find to be a little bit uh, annoying about this bike is the fuel tank because it's so wide instead of high uh, it can get quite tiresome on long rides and I have done rides as long as sort of 700 odd kilometers 7 800 kilometers on on this bike in a day Take my indicator off yay um, so uh, that was one of the uh, annoying things about it um, and also on the standard version this console area here is uh, chrome so the sun hits it and then bounces straight back in your face so I blacked that out and that'll stay blacked out because I found that it's been absolutely wonderful and the other thing is that when you're on a motorcycle doing 100 kilometers an hour or uh, around 63 mile an hour um, which is almost the maximum speed limit in New Zealand you can do 110 on a couple of roads but, but there aren't many roads that you can do that so when you're doing 63 mile an hour or 100 kilometers an hour uh, on a uh, on a road the last thing in the world that you want is wind constantly pushing against you because what you find is that it pushes you back in your seat and you end up hanging on to the handlebars for dear life because you've got 100 km an hour winds coming at you so uh, one of the things I did was go out and buy one of these on AliExpress uh, it cost me around about oh, I think it was 50 bucks <laughs> New Zealand which is around about $25-30 US uh, to be able to put that on and it's been great uh, for the last couple of months I've had it I've done a few rides out to where we're going today on this bike and uh, and I and I think that it's probably the best decision that I've made on the bike it just keeps all the wind off your chest uh, and most of the wind it just puts the top of my helmet but most of the wind misses my body so it makes for a much more comfortable ride um, now this engine 
the GB250 engine is actually also on Kyosung's uh, GT250 which is a racing bike, uh, it's a sport bike they use it for racing here in New Zealand, there's something called the Kyosung Cup uh, and so you'll find that this engine will rev very high so uh, you're sort of revving out at about uh, 11 and a half to 12,000 RPM whereas most cruiser bikes you know you're in around about the 7 to 8,000 RPM mark it is still reasonably torquey with 22 newton meters of torque and so uh, 0 to 60 time that's 60 kilometers per hour uh, reaches in about four and a half seconds uh, and onto top speed of uh, 100 kilometers an hour, well, top legal speed, 100 kilometers an hour, uh, at around about 11 and a half seconds. <coughs> and if you look at the uh, Continental GT from uh, from uh, uh, Royal Enfield, uh, it's, that's almost another second slower than this is to 100. So it's quite nippy for a 250. Now here we're, we're kind of just cruising along the road here at uh, indicated 90 but I know for a fact that that's actually 80 so indicated 90 um, top speed is uh, 130 kilometers an hour it's very happy just sitting here doing 90, 80, 90 kilometers an hour get to 100 it'll sit there all day long but don't expect it to overtake in a hurry it takes a long time to be able to get to 120 or 130 kilometers an hour if you happen to require passing a vehicle at 90 make sure you've got plenty of planning there well that's the same for any just dis small displacement motorcycle i wouldn't say that it's any slower or any worse overtaking on this than it would be on the ktm 390 adventure they're about the same, even though this has got a bit less top end on it. The torque levels are, are consistent enough, and the bike is light enough uh, that it will, it will overtake in around about the same amount of time. Uh, or the Duke 390, whichever one you want to do. Now, I'm just going to have to remember to keep wiping you guys off, because this fog's getting very, very thick in places. So, all in all, this motorcycle uh, will do everything that you ask it to do it's not a long distance touring machine it'll do it uh, but the oil air cooling makes it a lot easier to do that on this bike than it does on some of its competition such as the Suzuki Intruder 250 uh, or the Yamaha Virago it's a lot easier on the engine uh, only takes about 1.6 litres of oil which is kind of cool um, and uh, I found that this bike, I've owned two of them now and some people say that they're dreadfully unreliable I don't know whether it's just been because they were uh, just, just because they, they lucked out and got a, a really bad one uh, but uh, I've owned two of these now and I just get on and ride I don't even need to engage the choke on this 90% of the time uh, in fact it responds better if I start it without the choke on it so uh, I, I, I absolutely love this bike and I think for a learner bike this is all that you need to be able to get around town if you're only going for maybe an hour or so out of town I would say that this bike is perfect for you as a learner rider provided that you are below six foot Anyone taller than six feet is probably going to struggle a little bit on this bike. Um, this has, it did have, it did have the original tyres on it from 2007. So I went and swapped those out just recently to these, um, they're exactly the same, they're a Shinko uh, and, um, and they do the job quite nicely. I did want to get some Metzler Triple Eight white walls but they don't do them in the size that this bike takes as far as tyres are concerned um, and it's a, uh, a 16 and a uh, sorry it's a 15 and a 16 tyre so 15 on the back and a 16 on the front so 
the, uh, they're just a bit of an unusual size so I was stuck with just keeping the Shinkos on there but the great thing is with a Shinko they're cheap, really cheap fitted that was 350 New Zealand dollars or about 200 US so it's a really cheap bike to run here in New Zealand there are no stockists of this bike anymore I think they call it KL brand in, in America and they've got another brand over in uh, Europe that, that uh, supports these bikes but here in New Zealand at the moment there are no stockists there was for a really long time there was for probably 10 or 15 years and um, just one by one they all closed down some of them were Suzuki dealerships some of them were Kawasaki dealerships that also stocked these bikes one by one for whatever reason they've closed down and nobody's picked up the torch to be able to uh, continue on with these motorbikes so you're looking at a bike which you're gonna have to buy parts for online mechanics will still work on them so long as you buy the parts or so long as you don't mind them buying the parts at retail and then on charging you another 20 or 30 percent i have no issues with that personally um, and uh, they've got to make a living and they make their money off parts so if i don't want to fix it myself i'll get the mechanic to do it and uh and i'll pay the premium price however in saying that uh, like a new set of exhaust pipes for this bike uh, 300 New Zealand dollars about 200 US the um, a, a new set of McKinney carburetors for this bike uh, $1,000 uh, or around about uh, $670 $680 US so it's not exactly a uh, an expensive bike to actually fix uh, I've gone out and bought a whole bunch of second-hand parts that are um, all chrome and what have you uh, so that I can make this bike look new again uh, and I'm only really missing the front headlight and the uh, front headlight handlebars and oh, the, uh, the exhaust pipes so uh, I'm only missing those and it only cost me $430 second hand to be able to grab everything so it's not an expensive bike to upkeep it's not an expensive bike to run uh, this bike will do on a 14 litre tank around about 470 to 480 k's I never pushed it beyond that uh, but um, I had to switch to reserve at 470 I drive or ride fairly economically on my motorbikes I try not to absolutely wring them out so I'm probably getting around 3 litres to 3.2 litres per 100 k's uh, or 60 miles uh, so three, uh, probably a gallon just under a gallon of fuel per 60 miles And um, so it's been a good little bike as far as just being able to, especially now, fuel prices are astronomical here in New Zealand at the moment. We're paying around about $2.70, $2.80 a litre for petrol. Uh, that works out to be around about $9 to $10 a gallon for you uh, Americans out there that may or may not be watching us. Uh, so the cheaper I can uh, I can ride around the better really um, now this bike's got everything you need it's got a fuel gauge one thing to remember about your fuel gauge is that it won't register until the tanks half empty so when it registers half it's actually a quarter and uh, Pretty accurately when it gets to that little red line down there, I don't know if you can see it but when it gets to that little red line down there uh, you're going to have to switch to reserve so aside from that everything on this bike seems to work really really well I've never had an issue with one aside from the diaphragm on the carburetor on my last one uh, decided to split and ended up with a little pinhole in it 
and so it was causing a few issues with a, an idle and it was also making the bike run a little bit uh, a little bit too lean so aside from that uh, had no issues and this bike I've owned for nearly a thousand kilometers now uh, which is let's see about 600 miles 630 miles um, and I've not had one single mechanical issue with it in that time it's a 17 year old bike it's done 7255 k's so if it's not going to uh, if it's not going to break down now it doesn't mean that it never will but as you can see I'm riding it relatively hard indicated 100 kilometers an hour which is around about 100 uh, sorry 90 kilometers an hour uh, and it just cruises along these roads really nicely um, some people have complained that the ride's pretty solid I sort of found that on my last one I don't know what's different about this one but it doesn't feel like a hard ride so I don't know if it was preload settings needed adjusting or what it was in fact that's probably what it was the preload on this is set at 1 the preload on the uh, on the one I had before was set at 5 so I would say that probably it was just set a little bit too hard on that bike but I find this bike's fairly comfortable to ride I like taking you guys out here because the scenery is nice it tips into corners a lot easier than my Suzuki V-Strom probably due to low down weight uh, and the fact that it's oh, 50 kilos probably lighter than that bike uh, so I'm doing an indicated 110 now which is uh, around about 100 kilometers an hour now going uphill I don't know if that's going to translate in the um, in the camera but I'm holding 100 kilometers an hour absolutely fine going up the hill in fact I'm going to have to button off to get around this corner accelerating again after that corner a little bit tricky, I'm actually at full throttle now and it's doing around about 95 but that's good enough for this old boy well the view's normally beautiful through here but uh, there's not much to see right now <laughs> it down to fourth gear it's a five speed transmission I've just flicked it down to fifth uh, sorry fourth to be able to get a uh, little bit more oomph out of it we're heading into a bit of a twisty section now so uh, we can test that out but also we're going to want to be in a lower gear just to be able to maximize the potential on the bike for the twisties when I first got this bike as a learner I had only ridden dirt bikes before and probably at a maximum of about 60 kilometers an hour and uh, so I found this absolutely terrifying at 100 kilometers an hour <laughs> not because the bike handled poorly at all uh, but but simply because uh, I didn't know what I was doing really I had my learner's license and then they just chuck you out on the road and go go get some experience I've done some courses and things since then so that's definitely helped um, but as you can see we're driving the speed limit I'm in fourth gear at the moment take it down to third nice wee view there uh, I've had some of the baffles, well, sorry, the baffles have been taken out of the back of the exhaust pipe there <coughs> which has created some uh, nice little gurgly noises which you don't get with it when it's uh, fully baffled I didn't take them out, they were taken out before I got the bike 
when I get the new exhaust there won't be anything uh, taken out, I'll just leave it as standard. This has a nice little gurgle to it. It really feels like a bit of a toy now because I've been on the uh, Vistrum for a year and a half. So when I got this, it just flicks into the corners so easily, it's so light. It really just feels like you're going down the road on a go-kart. Uh, when I first got it, I thought, man, when I first started riding one of these, I thought, man, it's really hard to turn, but it's amazing what you can do when you learn how to ride a bike and doing uh, counter steering and trail braking as a, uh, an essential thing to learn on a motorcycle. And now this thing feels like it's on rails. It just corners almost better than uh, any of the other bikes that I've test ridden before actually. Um, these tyres are probably the limiting factor to it because they're only a cheap set of tyres. I feel the tyres letting go before I feel the bike letting go if that makes sense. So I'm just consciously aware of the uh, of the tyres and that they're not a, uh, a great set. But handles really nicely around the corners for the most part. It's, uh, it's up to speed just fine. in the corners just fine you know your bike's more than capable when you start catching cars have this on the on the tank um, I carry all my GoPro batteries and and uh, my air pump for the tires etc in that bag so I thought today because I'm filming on this bike I will carry that with me Basically what you can expect from a bike like this is if you end up pulling out behind a car like I am now uh, don't expect to overtake anytime, uh, anytime quickly because uh, it just needs a bit of a wind up to be able to get there and this road's really tight and twisty uh, there's not many straights so you don't have a lot of overtaking opportunities even if you're on a really powerful bike so you just have to learn to take your time, cruise, enjoy the ride, enjoy the scenery. And just not get too stressed out about that guy in front. The position of your throttle is really good. I can leave my hand here for a long period of time and I don't get a sore wrist. The bike's a little bit vibey, you can pretty much feel that all over the bike, including through the seat uh, at 100 kilometers an hour, but it's not annoying, you don't end up with tingly fingers at the end of your ride, you don't end up with any of those sorts of issues, it's just a vibe that happens to be there, it's quite high vibration, so it's part of riding a V twin anyway, my, my Suzuki V-Strim's got a bit of a vibe to it as well. Uh, and it's just because they're a V-twin and that's what they do. It's part of the charm, I suppose, of the bike. And I don't mind that at all. And out of all the bikes that I've ridden, I would say to you that uh, 
your single cylinder bikes, KTM 390s, etc., vibe a lot worse than this does. And uh, they're not as, uh, probably I would say, not quite as agile. They tip in on the corners really nicely, but this just seems to do corners a little bit better. I'm not saying this is a better bike by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm just saying that it's just so light to tip into the corners. Uh, it's also very stable at, at high speed. I guess the ergonomics of the bike help for that. So I really enjoy it. It's not the best bike I've ever ridden. Uh, it's not the worst bike I've ever ridden, but it's nostalgic for me because it was my first bike. So, I guess bottom line, because it was my first bike, I, I just want to have one because it means that I can say that I still own my first bike, or I still own the same version as my first bike. Ultimately, I'd love to own a motorcycle shop and start bringing yo sons into New Zealand. Uh, but uh, that's probably a couple of years down the track yet before I can get that done. So, the suspension's really adequate on this. And this isn't a smooth road by any stretch of the imagination. I, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but it's a bit bumpy. It's kind of a B road, it's not really an A road. and we're going to do some trips on this as well but I wanted to do a review on this because there's very little in English on these bikes there's a lot of uh, Indian stuff there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff from the Philippines uh, but there's not really a lot of English stuff English speaking stuff on this and I just wanted to do my version of that um, So that's really where we're at. Now, as an illustration of that fuel tank, just while we're coming into a slower speed area, uh, I've done 94 kilometers on this tank, and it's still reading as full. When in theory it should be one fifth of the way down, or thereabouts. Uh, and that won't change until I get to around about 200 to 220 kilometers, and then you'll start to see that gauge move. Get out now and third gear just on the red line there in third. The third will do 100 kilometers an hour. such a great fun little bike that you don't need to muscle it around, you don't need to really do anything to this bike really to get it to go somewhere or to do something. You know that was a really big hill that we were going up there, it held 110 kilometers an hour with in fifth gear, no problems at all, at least, yeah it was definitely fifth gear. So it's everything you need and nothing you don't. If you can get, I would recommend, if you can get the fuel injected version of this, I would get the fuel injected version of this. I think it's another 0.3 horsepower on the fuel injected version. So you're up around about 28.5 horsepower, so, but it's not really about that. 
it's more about reliability, less issues with car with um, with fuel injection than what you get with carburation. So if you can, I would recommend uh, the fuel injection version. You'll know the difference between them because the carbureted version has V twin written on the airbox cover uh, versus the uh, fuel injected version having EFI written on it and this has a twin exhaust whereas that's a two into one exhaust so uh, there are some minor differences between them but essentially it's the same motor it's, it's virtually the same everything on these bikes as what, uh, as what the fuel injected version's got it's just that this one here usually retails for around about a thousand dollars less New Zealand prices so six or seven hundred dollars less than the fuel injected version does. So uh, that's why I have this one because I already have the uh, the V Strim. The V Strim is my main V Strim is my main source of transport these days. Um, I ride that around more than I ride than I drive a car or anything on those lines. It's got top box and pannier bags on it. Um, I can fit all my all my gear in it. I go Christmas shopping in it because it's easier to find car park. Well, you know, like it's easier to find a, a park. And worst case scenario, if all of the motorcycle parks are taken up, I just park in the footpath next to one of the shops. Never have an issue. So I just find motorcycles much easier to get transport on, much easier to go and do a thing on. I use this bike for most of my around town stuff simply because it just doesn't chew any gas. Uh, it's a fun little bike to ride. I've only been out on this bike, I've only been out this way maybe two or three times. But I absolutely love it. It's um, really easy to tuck into corners. It's really easy to just sit on and ride. So if you are a new rider, I would actually take this bike because you can grow with this bike. I'm going up a really big hill now. I'm still doing 100 kilometers an hour. I'm wide open throttle on that, but I'm still doing 100 kilometers an hour in fifth gear. So it will keep up with traffic absolutely fine. You'll have no issues at all. It'll have more than enough power for a learner for probably the first year or two of your riding. After that you might be looking to move up a little bit, but most people do anyway. Uh, I've been riding for nearly 18 months now. Next month I'll have been riding for 18 months. And that's, um, oh, sorry, not 18 months, sorry, two and a half years. It's two and a half years to get your full license in New Zealand. Um, so I've been, I will have been riding for two and a half years as of next month. And uh, <laughs> my Beastrum, I'm looking to replace that in the next year or two, probably. I've said on a previous video, a year to two years. Um, I don't know if it's going to be that long, it might be the end of this year. Uh, simply because I found a bike that looks absolutely extraordinary. I'm going to see if I can get a test ride on one uh, as soon as I've got my full license. But it's the uh, CF Moto, look it up, CF Moto MT800. It's got the KTM 390 engine on it. It comes with cruise control, heated grips, heated seat. Uh, it comes with Bosch EFI fuel injection front and rear, uh, fully adjustable suspension. Uh, the bike has 95 horsepower, six speed. Um, quick shift transmission, that's quick shift up and down and I'm just going wow I mean it doesn't have traction control but it does have cornering ABS so it's pretty much well, it's got riding modes, it's got off-road, on-road and sport so sorry, off-road, sport and rain modes on it so it has three riding modes on it and it's 
15,000 New Zealand dollars which is the same price as you pay for a Suzuki V-Strom that doesn't have half of those features. The bike also comes with um, full uh, luggage racks, it comes with uh, crash protection, comes with um, uh, uh, hand guards, comes with everything that you actually require. 7 inch TFT dash on it. Um, which, car, which has uh, satellite navigation on it as well so you don't need to go out and buy a sat nav and you don't have to run your phone uh, there is absolutely everything on that bike except for traction control uh, so that will probably be my the top of the list nothing in the um, in the learner category trumped my V-Strom um, for comfort, for reliability, longevity, absolutely nothing trumped it. Um, but I'd also been riding for quite some time at that stage, so uh, I was able to handle that bike. I, I will say it was very, very scary when I first got on it, even at 47 horsepower, because I was used to the previous version of this, which was only 26 horsepower. So it was just about double the horsepower on it. So we took a little while to get to know one another, that bike and I. And uh, so this is Raglan, for those of you that haven't seen my videos before. And we're just going to go up to the main beach here. And then uh, we'll finish up the review. So I'll, I'll, um, um, yeah, and then I'll, I'll make my way home. Uh, but I just wanted you guys just to see. Sorry, just checking a few things. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've been stranded on motorcycles a couple of times. The V-Strims let me down a few times. Um, just due to the fact that it was given a hard life before I got it and the previous version of this because it was running lean it used to keep uh, dropping a spark plug so um, I, I got uh, I barely got home from Auckland one day and it was raining and in the middle of the night and uh, I was absolutely packing myself it was uh, I'd not long been riding I'd only been riding a couple of months uh, and yeah it was a pretty um, pretty hairy, hairy ride back from Auckland <coughs> and uh, so that's it's uh, for those of you that don't know Hamilton to Auckland's around about an hour uh, and um, yeah it was just a bit scary just a bit scary in the dark and the rain for an hour well it actually took me because I was down to about 30 kilometers an hour uh, <laughs> it actually took me nearly two hours to get home on the side of the road a few times etc the joys of riding if you haven't been stranded on a motorcycle at some stage I don't believe that you're a real motorcyclist uh, <laughs> the, um, I was in the middle of rush hour traffic in Auckland and on my way back down to Hamilton on the uh, Suzuki V-Strom and uh, that uh, decided that the clutch was going to go and it just went all of a sudden so I had clutch and then all of a sudden I didn't have clutch and uh, it just went like like that in the space of about two or three kilometers and man I tell you I was I was packing myself I was on the fast lane and uh, was going up a hill and the clutch just went and <laughs> the bike just started slowing down and slowing down and slowing down and uh, I managed to fiddle around and get the clutch cable a little bit uh, you know, managed to get just a little bit more out of it uh, and I got to Drury and turned off in Drury um, which was only about one or two k's down the road and oh mate um, the bike just stopped I was trying to work out what was going on with it because it's the first time a clutch had gone on a motorbike for me and I, I couldn't work out what, what was what was going on I had a guy Rob Rob if you're watching this video uh, I still thank uh, the Lord every day for, for you uh, showing up and um, 
Rob was an amazing bloke, mate, I tell you. He uh, volunteered to go and get his car. We managed to limp it to a, uh, a motorcycle shop, and they actually made it worse. <laughs> Uh, and then I had to limp it to another motorcycle shop because that guy would only take cash and um, I uh, only had FPOS so I limped it to another shop got them to uh, take it and uh, they put a new clutch in it and all that kind of stuff and after many hours uh, my wife came and grabbed me from uh, Drury and took me home and I think it was about two weeks before I saw the bike again so if you haven't been <laughs> if you haven't been stranded on a motorcycle at some stage in your life uh, it's an experience to behold and I don't believe that you're a complete person until that's actually happened <laughs> um, so this is Narunui Beach um, a lot of people just call this Raglan Beach, but it's Naru Nui Beach. Uh, and uh, so we'll wrap up and we'll do a, a final thoughts on this video at this point. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's got this really nice throaty gurgle. Um, in the uh, four and a half to five and a half thousand dollar, uh, sorry, four and a half to five thousand RPM range. Uh, just sounds really nice. <laughs> going to pop in over there we'll do a quick walk around again I'll give you my final thoughts on the bike hope you've enjoyed your cup of tea while you've been uh, watching the video okay let's park it up over here eh <coughs> a few guys out surfing don't know if you'll see that in the GoPro uh, it's currently April here, so we're heading into winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh. Can be sometimes a little tricky to get into neutral. <coughs> I found since I've done an oil change, it's much easier to get it into neutral. So, we're here. So, uh, one of the other features that you've got here is you've got a hinge lock tank, um, uh, which is really nice. So, uh, final thoughts on the bike. Well, it corners really well. Uh, it's economic to fix. It, it, you know, parts are worth next to nothing. Um, I've found them to be very, very reliable. And um, uh, as a lunar bike, I found that it was probably one of the uh, one of the best bikes I could have you know hoped for in that regard it um it does a, a really nice job um and and I, I really feel that if you're looking for a motorcycle uh to learn on i think a 250s um pretty well in there um as far as uh power and and uh, your ability to be able to handle it um, you could go up to maybe a 400 I probably wouldn't go up any higher than a 400 I just think that uh, the the power to weight ratio just gets a little bit too much for most learners uh, if you've done some dirt bike riding etc uh, then then maybe you could go up to a, a 500 or a 600 uh, but if you're brand new to motorcycles, this is going to be more powerful than you can actually probably imagine because even a, a slow motorcycle is very, very fast. Um, uh, but like I say, 300 bucks for a set of tyres, 
uh, New Zealand, uh, oh, sorry, 350 New Zealand for a new set of tyres fitted and balanced. Um, uh, and then you have um, uh, the parts are, are worth nothing. Uh, it's really easy to work on. Uh, once you take that tank off, <coughs> it's really easy to get at valves. It's very easy to get at everything pretty much once that tank comes off and that little bit of front cowling there. Um, the seat's pretty comfortable for anyone below six foot. Uh, I wouldn't think that uh, if you were uh, any bigger than that, that it's it's going to be ideal for you. You probably want to be going up to a 400 because your your size and weight would warrant it. Uh, like I say, I'm six foot. I can uh, I can sit on this bike. Um, I'm 90 kgs, so uh, that's um, oh, I don't know 195 pounds or something. Um, this bike handles that just fine, but I wouldn't go any bigger than, than that. Um, uh, the one thing that I did add was uh, the charger, um, and I, I found that to be absolutely amazing. I can plug my phone into it and use that for sat-nav when I'm doing longer trips. Uh, and all I did was wire it into the front headlight, so you can see the, the wiring coming down into here, and I just wired it into the front headlight. Um, so that as soon as the lights are on, that's on, because that has an on-off switch, and I always forget to flick things on and off, and I didn't want to drain a battery. So, final thoughts. Um, well, this, I'm a little bit biased, I'm a little bit of a fanboy of, these, uh, of this brand, actually. Uh, I've been um, riding this brand, really, for two years, two and a half years on and off. I've ridden a lot of other bikes. And I just happen to think that if you're if you're in the market for a, a cheap learner bike, something that you know in 12 months or 18 months you can uh, get rid of for about the same price as what you bought it for, um, this is this is the bike for you. For me personally, this bike's going to be completely restored, uh, back to original condition. I'm getting all the parts and everything for it now, and uh, and I'll take you with me on that journey as I get that stuff done. Uh, but I have thoroughly enjoyed this bike and, uh, and in fact I liked it so much I bought it again. Um, so that's it from me. Um, thank you for coming along on the journey and uh, I hope that you found this useful and uh, we will see you in the next episode. In the meantime, uh, God bless and uh, keep the rubber side down. Cheers.